New explosive details are emerging about how cruise ships have handled the coronavirus pandemic. Bloomberg reports executives from Carnival Cruise Lines knew about the crisis, yet continued operations as normal. Ships continued to sail despite the growing health threat and emergency declarations worldwide. More than 1,500 people aboard Carnival Cruises have since tested, tested positive for the virus, and dozens have died. Bloomberg reporter Austin Carr co-wrote that article, and he is with us now to talk more about this. Uh, Austin, you write that Carnival officials knew about the growing coronavirus threat as early as January and into the first week of February. So why did these ships continue sailing and holding major events and parties on board? I, I think that's the big question that we were trying to answer. We spent a lot of time reporting this story, trying to nail down the exact timeline of when uh, Carnival first learned of these issues and how they responded on their ships. And the reality is, from the first ship which had an infection, which is the Diamond Princess, which was a massive cruise ship sailing around Asia, there was a massive delay between anywhere between 24 hours and 43 hours from when they were first alerted or first confirmed that a COVID-19 case uh, had happened aboard a, a prior voyage of the ship and from when they actually told passengers. And so just given the results that you mentioned, more than 1,500 uh, infections, I think we're up to about 39 fatalities uh, across all about nine ships. The big question is whether there was too long of a delay before informing, informing passengers, initiating more quarantine measures and the health and sanitation protocols aboard their ships. Yeah, and, and you write in your article that, you know, they're holding like events in the movie theater, people are rushing to the buffet, and some of the passenger, passengers are even wondering themselves, well, when are we going to be locked down, or aren't they going to cancel this one event, and it's just, it's just not happening. And I know I was really surprised to learn that there are cruise ships that are still running now. Uh, across the industry, yes, but Carnival, as of I think this week, had just said that they docked their last ship. But that was what was so so surprising mm. when I interviewed the CEO, Arnold Donnell of Carnival. Um, he actually, you know, this was on April 1st, and at that time they still had 6,000 uh, passengers and crew, I think, at sea. Uh, so those were really stunning numbers, particularly given the number of infections that were happening aboard their ships. Uh, like you noted, um, there were still public gatherings, even on the second ship infected, which was a month after the first. Uh, that was on the, the Grand Princess, which that high profile one that got stuck off the coast of San Francisco that President Trump was hesitant to let dock on the U.S. And passengers that we talked to say that even after Carnival became aware of the situation, they were still going to line dancing classes, you know, film lectures, bridge games, bars and restaurants and buffets. You know, the type of fun that you would have aboard any cruise ship vacation. But as they soon learned, this paradise quickly turned into a nightmare. Mm. And Austin, you also write about how Carnival and other cruise companies uh, were not included in a recent federal bailout. Uh, are there ties between Carnival and the White House? To some degree, yes. Carnival um, had, had actually sponsored The Celebrity Apprentice, which, as, as I'm sure you all remember, is that show that uh, before he was president, Donald Trump had hosted and, and served as producer of. Um, and then Carnival actually hosted an apprentice-themed cruise. Um, uh, uh, Carnival's chairman, Mickey Arison, um, he has had several calls with, directly with the president. Um, and, and in fact, uh, pre the President Trump on April 14th named him to that uh, business council advising the president on when to reopen the economy. But so far, they have not been included, whether for loan guarantees or even a, a, a taxpayer bailout, like you have seen some other companies um, that are based in the U.S. And that's partially because, well, Carnival isn't really based in the U.S. They actually pay most of their taxes in Panama, where they, flag, uh, they fly their ships under. They, they fly under either Panama flags or Bahamas, which a lot of cruise companies do. And that's one of the re main reasons, according to uh, Senator Blumenthal, the, the Democratic uh, senator, he, he just said there's strong bipartisan support uh, to, to giving them a federal bailout, in part because they're not really a U.S. company and they've really abated or skirted uh, taxes over the years. Oh, that is interesting. Um, but I imagine this virus has been devastating to the cruise ship industry. Totally. I, I, well, they, the CDC has issued no sale orders, which have been extended. So that means no, no, no cruise ships uh, should be sailing at all. We talked to the head of the cruise ship task force at the CDC, and she said, uh, you know, no one should be on a cruise ship full stop. So that means, given that Carnival and all the other 
cruise industry players make all their money from sailing ships and selling food and beverages aboard these cruises. They're making no revenue right now. And without a federal bailout, they've had to turn to the private markets to raise uh, equity uh, and, and raise uh, liquidity to sort of, you know, survive an extended downturn. The CEO of Carnival, Arnold Donald, told me, you know, without more capital coming in, we just won't have a company. And so that's one of the things that they're trying to address. Uh, but right now, there's a pause in all sailings and, and uh, their stock for Carnival, uh, I think, has been as down as much as 75 percent within the last uh, since the beginning of the year. And Austin, I know you said you spoke to uh, uh, the head of Carnival, but has there been an official response to your reporting? Well, uh, not publicly so, but I, I will just say that the, the Carnival says that they're optimistic about the cruise industry rebounding. They say they're adding more sanitation protocols, uh, more health measures and, and screening measures to their ships uh, that, that it, going forward. That's one of the things that they're, they're going to take this sort of pause in sailings to review. Um, and, and they just said, you know, the, the CEO of Carnival, Arnold Donald, told me that there's a lot of, quote, negative noise uh, out there, which might which might, might be somewhat of an understatement about the cruise industry. Uh, but he's optimistic that it'll bounce back once they get uh, passengers aboard these ships, once they can resume. And the question is really, after all these negative headlines, these high profile outbreaks aboard their ships, does consumer behavior start to change? Do passengers and consumers actually still want to, to take these ships? I don't know about you guys, but I, I have heard from some passengers that they were hesitant to take another cruise after these outbreaks. But the large majority that I talked to actually said that they were looking forward to taking more cruises, even ones that had been impacted directly by this, uh, uh, these, these COVID-19 infections aboard Carnival ships, which is, uh, to me, somewhat quite surprising. Uh, you know, yeah, surprising uh, is how I, I would lightly cruise. put it. Sorry, Vlad. I, I just, my aunt, I'll, I'll give you guys a little sort of insight. My aunt and uncle love cruising. Um, and, you know, often these cruises allow you to buy cruises in advance. So they kind of already have cruises stocked away, if you will, that they're waiting to take. And so I, I wouldn't be surprised if for a lot of people, particularly those cruise-loving people, um, they've already purchased their next four vacations and they want to use them. Yeah, it's actually split. There was an SEC filing that uh, Carnival issued that showed that when they offered refunds or vouchers for future cruises to passengers in early March, that about, uh, I think it was roughly split, about half asked for a refund, meaning they didn't want to cruise again. But the other half, that the half glass full for Carnival is that 50, you know, roughly 45 or 50 percent said that they they took the voucher. They want to cruise again with Carnival. And that's what, to be honest, I heard from the majority of passengers that I talked to. They said that, you know, they just love Carnival. And despite all these issues, they trust the brand and, and want to continue sailing despite, you know, uh, 39 fatalities and 1,500 plus infections on nine ships uh, uh, under the Carnival brand. So uh, that's really quite fascinating. Yeah, I mean, I would think, look, after uh, back in 2013, what was uh, known around the world as the poop cruise, I sort of decided right then and there that I probably would not be uh, into taking cruises. Although, and Marie, as you point out, uh, my parents have, and I can't for the life of me understand why they would continue to do so. And I'd be, as a, as a son, um, I'd be perhaps concerned if in the future they wanted to, to take one. And this is not to disparage any one particular cruise company, it's just in general, I think that you know this time and time again, it's proven to be problematic when there are pandemics like this or other instances of issues that crop up that put people uh, you know at a greater risk than you know just getting on a plane and going somewhere on your own. So um, we'll have to see how it all plays out. But really interesting reporting, Austin. Thank you for digging into that because I, I didn't realize. Uh, all of what you reported in your article for Bloomberg um, until I started to look at your reporting. So uh, thank you very much for, for sharing the details of that with, with people who I think are going to be able to make an informed decision uh, going forward. If they decide to choose, if they choose to continue to go on those cruises, they'll have your reporting and others to, to uh, make that informed decision. Thank you. Thank you for having me.